course, there was example for like use of data on the 64 bit platforms where the uh, pointer uh, are extended to be uh, possible to port sandwich wrong. And of course, there is always a case where uh, logic, logic is a number, then you will use all 64 bits to represent that number. Uh, what the new G64 mode introduced is that uh, now all the pointers can have uh, are 47 bit long, and uh, all, uh, all the other 17 uh, bit, uh, out of the other 17 bits, uh, there are four that are used for tagging for setting the type of the pointer, which is basically enough because uh, Logit uh, uses up to 16 different types of values. And uh, the other 13, I mean the highest 13 bits, are all set to 1 and it's uh, kept that way uh, in order to uh, keep the recognizing of the not, not the number values. So this is basically it for that. And uh, now we'll see. Uh, what uh, main changes were for this 64 mode. So basically, in the most part of code, you have the operations, uh, three basic type of operations for uh, handling key values. Uh, you often need to either extract the pointer, or check the type of the pointer, or uh, extract the, uh, or set the type of the pointer. And here we can see uh, how these uh, basic operations are and we start for instructions for pointer extractions we uh, there is a defined constant with a lower lower 47 bit set in which is used after that and an instruction for basically uh, extracting just point of value. Uh, for pointer tagging uh, basically reverse process, uh, we have uh, a register, we put uh, in register certain constant that defines that type and then uh, use it in uh, the next instruction for addition. Uh, this register is now used as an operand which is a bit in the same instruction shifted with uh, shifted to the left or for some places to place the type values uh, type value bits on the proper, the proper location and keeping uh, the other 47, low 47 bits uh, of the original register which, have, uh, which holds the, the pointers. And for type checking, you only need to, of course, uh, isolate higher 17 bits and uh, that's done by the shift right instruction and after that comparing with the constant uh, in order to determine if uh, that's the pointer of the desired type. Something similar here uh, is done with new 64 instructions. These instructions uh, are from a uh, release 2 instruction set and it is re really, really usable because uh, for these operations we can use a uh, lot smaller number, uh, one or even two instructions for this operation. So we for instruction we have a special uh, mix extract instruction for pointer tagging also there is special instant instruction and type checking is more or less uh, done in the same way as in mix when see a uh, shift and write value uh, for the value for some bits to so <coughs> the pointer and then compare. So basically uh, when someone if someone tries to work logic on any new platforms. Uh, uh, it if he needs to just uh, take care of to implement these three basic operations, I would say, in the most efficient way. With a little less, uh, as less instructions as possible. Now I will go a little bit into source code and I would uh, explain what someone might need to do if they wanted to 
port logic to another architecture. And this is all with an assumption that there is already an interpreter implemented. So you, you have an inter interpreter and you want to implement JIT. Uh, so the first thing, well, not the first, but one of the things that you need to do is to implement missing pieces in the interpreter because when you, there are some pieces in the interpreter that, you, that are only usable if you have JIT. Uh, those, those things are like uh, entrance and uh, exit from JIT code, uh, detection of uh, hot code that needs to be jitted and stuff like that. You need to implement instructions for your architecture and define what registers it uses and stuff like that. Uh, you want to implement different emitters for uh, instructions. So there are different types, types of instructions. Instructions that, that use uh, three registers, instructions that use two registers and uh, constant. So you want to implement all those emitters. Uh, there is an IR to machine code transformation. So Logit emits a special uh, IR for Lua code, and that IR needs to be uh, transformed to machine code for your architecture. And this, this is where you want to do that. And you also want to implement the disassembler for your architecture. It's just as it sounds, the disassembler for your architecture. Um, so the first thing is the interpreter. As I said, hot loop detection exits from JIT code, entrances to JIT code, trace stitching, etc. Uh, those are all the things that you need to implement. This is a function that uh, handles exits from JIT. So uh, when something happens in, 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 in JIT code, so it finishes or uh, it fails, you want to go back to interpreter. And mostly every example that you are going to write is is going to go through this function. So you want to get this function uh, implemented properly uh, in, the, in the very beginning of your code. Uh, one of the things that you want to do in this function uh, is, first of all, you want to save the state of the JIT. You want to save all the registers that you use and, and put them on the stack. So those three dots are actually some of a missing code. That code basically just says, store all of the registers, all of the general purpose, all of the, all of the registers to the stack. You also want to make sure that you, uh, you uh, extract exit number and parent properly. Those are mo mostly different for every architecture. Uh, so the target file, uh, that, that is a file with a lot of defines and macros. You want to define uh, all of the instructions, all the instructions that you're going to use. So it's just an instruction with an encoding. You can probably find that in uh, reference manual for our architecture. You want to uh, encode uh, instruction fields. Uh, so you want different de destination registers on one encoding, source registers on different encoding. So those are instruction fields. Encodings. You also want to uh, find registers. How many registers your architecture has? Does it have a floating point unit? How many registers floating point unit has? How many registers are, are used for function calls, etc. Uh, this is a this is an instruction emitter. So uh, we have we have two functions here. Uh, this, these are the simple ones. Uh, the first function is emits. Uh, emits an instruction with three register operands, so D and M. Uh, you, and you pass uh, assembler state, one instruction, and three registers to it, and it just merges those, uh, all, of the, all of that information and puts it into machine, machine code pointer. Uh, the branch that, well, it emits a PC relative branch or PC relative jump instruction. It, it just needs to get the PC, current PC, uh, subtracted from the target pointer and uh, encode it. If, if you're not familiar, you're not, this is not going to make any sense to you, but it's not that hard. Uh, this is a little bit more complex uh, emitter. It, it emits a load from our uh, store to a pointer. Uh, so you pass it a pointer and a register. 
and you want to uh, you want the information in that register to be the information that the pointer points to. So first you have to uh, so this is for ARM 64 architecture, and uh, ARM has some specific instructions. So it has a PC relative load. So you first want to try uh, ask can I can I can I do a PC relative load? If I can, then do a PC relative load else. Else, I want to try something different, like uh, GL relative load. The GL is global state for uh, for logit. Uh, if you can't, if you can do that, then you just allocate the regis register for that pointer and load it slowly, and then after that, load from that from, from that register. That that's the slow path to the point. Uh, the ER assembler. This well, this actually. This uh, IR assembly has uh, a function for every IR, IR instruction, logit IR instruction. Uh, these, the ones presented here, are a min minimum and maximum IR instructions. Uh, so they are implemented in one function, and uh, but they are def uh, they are defined as macros. So when logit gets a minimum uh, minimum uh, IR, it's going to call a min. Uh, ASM main uh, function uh, and well, well there is a different path if you are if you are doing a floating point uh, minimum maximum and if you're doing integer minimum maximum you want to do different things you want to do, uh, use different registers so uh, if you well this this example here shows the integer minimum maximum so what you want to do a minimum maximum is a three operand instruction so it has the result the one value and the, the other value, the left and the right, and you want to uh, know which one is minimum. So you allocate the register for for a uh, for destination, that, and all these functions that start with R A are register allocated functions. So you want to allocate, allocate destination register, you allocate left, you allocate left, right register, and you emit and you emit uh, the two two instructions, compare and conditional select. So you want to co compare values first, and then you want to conditionally select. If one is higher than, or if left is higher, then you select left, and if it's a maximum, and if it's a minimum, vice versa. And as, as you can see here, the conditional select is emitted first, and then compare. That's because logit emits the code backwards. So if you, if you take a look here, you can see that the, that the point <coughs> of the machine code is uh, detrimental, so it's, it's generated backwards, so don't, don't let this confuse you. Uh, the other thing you want to pay attention to are optimizations. Uh, they are, they are uh, probably as an architecture specific in the optimization, the optimization that you can do. For R64, these are some of the optimizations that you implemented. Uh, so you can, you when you when you write write in Lua uh, A plus B times C, you can actually get that to be just one instruction. So, and Lua is a dynamically typed language with uh, inter dyna dynamically typed interpreted language. <coughs> All that is just one instruction. That is pretty impressive to me because usually in inter interpreted languages you get a lot of instructions for something, some expression like that. Also there are in interesting in, uh, interesting optimizations from concerning loading concepts. You want to look at that. And you probably want to uh, want to look into popular compilers like GCC and LVN to find ideas for these optimizations. So now for the changes on MIPS 64 part, as I already mentioned, we did uh, interpreter port and JIT port as well. Uh, as for today, we will not uh, give, any, give some more details about interpreter port, but just to mention that all the changes were uh, related to uh, early mentioned uh, T value tagging tagging operations. And the uh, JIT part changes are pretty much similar as the changes that are done on ARM64 port. 
uh, the thing that we are going to do, MIG-64 softcode, will uh, need a little bit specific change than earlier to port, uh, because in current state, uh, BlueRGIT doesn't support any 64-bit softcode soft architecture, so uh, then, uh, in order to enable that, we need to make a little changes in split pass, uh, Precise uh, disabled splitting 64 bit IRs into 32 bit IRs. And after that, uh, keep the continue the uh, normal work that we planned, uh, can pull the point right properly, meaning to, to make sure that we don't to generate any <coughs> holding point instructions and call functions proper manner. So that's about it. And here you can see benefits of this work. Uh, on these slides are uh, represented changes, uh, result tests uh, uh, that are run on ARM64 platforms. And uh, these bars, uh, on the red bar represents uh, how many times the uh, logic it was faster uh, considered to compared to a uh, low up point one five point one interpreter and uh, blue bars are just here to show the difference between uh, logic's interpreter and the uh, logic's when it's legit compiled in a mode. That's about it from us. If you have any questions? Yeah. Uh, you said that uh, <coughs> in the 64 bit soft load, you're going to divide it into 32 and then call it. Are you going to call 32 bit no, no, soft we, load? Uh, it's, uh, Please what? repeat the question. So, yeah. Uh, the question is uh, in, if we were in soft load, we're going to divide 64 bit instruction. Uh, the answer is that. Uh, in the current state of code, it's already uh, been doing for soft loads. So 64 bit instructions are divided into 32 bits. 32 bit, 232 bit instructions, we want to disable that because it's not uh, longer necessary. Okay. Is there any specific role of a combined module of well, uh, there is uh, there are specifics in in the interpreter, and in JIT there are a few things that we have to take care of, but nothing nothing special. But well, in interpreter now that there are a lot of things that you have to take care of uh, because you have to uh, implement a calling convention for that architecture. How which registers you want to use? How do you want to? Uh, how, how do you use stack, how do you pass values, and it, it can get complex. I guess that's, that's it. Thank you.